Hello and welcome back to another Mountain Blade Warband video. As usual, if you're new to the channel, please make sure to subscribe, like and comment on the video. And as always, a big thank you to all those who have subscribed recently and in the past it has been brilliant to see uh, this channel grow and see all the comments and questions on the videos. Like I say, I do usually try and get back to you as soon as I can. If I don't get back to you straight away, it's usually because I'm at work or I'm busy doing something, but I usually will try and get back to you. Or, in the other hand, sometimes, genuinely, uh, YouTube doesn't send me a notification to say that you actually commented on something or re-commented or anything like that. But I do try and scroll back through to see if there's anything that's been missed, and generally I do uh, try and answer them. Also, on a side note about content, I am actually wanting to branch out into a few more games. Uh, such as Hearts of Iron 4 and you know some Apex kind of highlights type of thing. If there's any kind of games that you guys like to watch, any other kind of you know non-mountain warbling games you guys like to watch um, or you like playing or anything like that, put some suggestions down below in the comment section. I will obviously, if it's something I feel like I want to play, then I might be able to play it and obviously record that type of gameplay. Uh, also, I am actually looking into a couple of different Mountain Blade Warband mods. Um, as quite a few people have actually said they would like to see some type of content in them. At the moment I am very much edging towards um, game of the Game of Thrones kind of mods, uh, but I will be looking into this a little bit more and seeing if this is something I want to go down at the same time as doing obviously vanilla Mountain Blade Warband and potentially Bannerlord gameplay uh, very soon. But thank you and like I say, put them suggestions in the comment section below. Now, just for context of the video, as you saw right at the start, uh, I had been captured again. Uh, I had done some more recording of about 30 odd minutes for footage, but this didn't save. Uh, so long story short, I retrained a new party of uh, troops to about 60-ish men, engaged a few battles, took a peep at the uh, Dercius Castle again where I uh, lost last time, got beaten, uh, viewed it as an easy quick take. And unfortunately got ambushed again uh, outnumbered three to one but we wiped at least 130 odd troops out of the uh, out of that army um, with about 160 that engaged realistically they had no one left standing if my lads had just stand a little bit for longer we would have won that one but hey ho that's how this game goes and we will be on to the next next set of challenges now, the title to the video today is How to Fight a Defensive War. Now, the question is, why do you need to fight a defensive war? What, what is the actual benefit sometimes? Honestly, for many experienced players that might be shouting out, well, this is obvious, it could literally just be a case of poor timing in your story at the moment uh, with whatever the kingdom's going on with. Or you may have just started your own kingdom and your right to rule is that low that every single kingdom literally will declare war on you and then you're gonna have to grind out to a point where your right to rule will increase your renown will increase and grind out down so many lords to a point where that kingdom no longer wants a war against you um, it could be as simple as case of you don't have the experienced troops right now and realistically if you go on the offensive and go into the other kingdom by going just past a village or castle or town shines a little beacon and the likelihood is you can get ambushed um, obviously the good idea of fighting a defensive war is also protecting your lands protecting the villages protecting recruiting stations realistically another answer is it is much easier to fight a defensive war first grind down the enemy to the point where they don't have that many lords left not that many experienced troops and then literally swing the tide of the war swing the momentum and go on the attack straight thereafter at that point you have the momentum you can go and take more land as they don't have the troops they don't have the experience to hold you back any longer and by that point hopefully you should have a very strong large experienced band of troops which means you can try and take as many castles as you want with little interference from outsiders as they will all be then trying to re-recruit troops. Another great reason for fighting a defensive war is literally sniping sieges. What I mean by this is the case of you've got once again a good band of troops by you, 
a war party has siege on a castle that castle has a decent you know a decent uh, garrison in there but likelihood without you interfering will probably fall with your band of troops reinforcing and yourself obviously getting a good place in that defensive siege you can potentially wipe out a whole warring army war party before they've even got a chance to do any damage so this is what i mean by sniping um, and like i say once again this will be a great way to grind down the enemy troops to the point where they have nothing left and like i say swap the momentum go on the attack after that So, as I've already explained before, how do you do this? It's literally a case of when you're patrolling your territories, where, whatever territory you need to potentially patrol, uh, you need to be looking out for any villages that are getting looted, any castles that are under siege, so that you can immediately turn and go and help them, the village, that castle, the other lords. You're patrolling around your lands, yeah, like I say, you're jumping into battles, as much as can any lords that any main enemy lords that are in your territory attack them because potentially like i say they're either going to loot siege or they're going to attack your caravans attacking caravans is going to weaken your kingdom's economy your trading around so it can adversely affect your businesses as well that you own in your big towns so like i say it's a case of you need to protect your lands, protecting the villages, because these villages, like I say, these are your recruiting grounds. So when you get into battles, you need to replenish troops. Obviously, you need to go and jump into a village and ask for any uh, new recruits that want to sign up. So this is a big reason for staying defensive for a good while, holding your position, keeping your kingdom strong at home, whilst overlords potentially are going to be causing havoc in the enemy territory. You will gain quite a lot of renown and experience and wealth and obviously loot from winning these battles at home. And like I say, at home, you're close to where all the action potentially is going to be with the attacking lords on the other side. Specifically, this tactic is really more for the case of when you've started your own kingdom. When you start your own kingdom on the wrong footing, as in... You don't have the right to roll high enough. You don't have your renown high enough. Um, you know, you're in a potentially a poor position because like I say, all the other kingdoms are gonna declare war on you. So it's gonna take a very long time to grind these down for each kingdom to then eventually turn around and say, we want to have a truce with you. Obviously, so then you can then concentrate on the rest. And then it, I have done this before. It takes a very long time to grind down the, this many enemies so like i can say this is really how to defend how to obviously fight a defensive war is really the highest tactic for if you have started your own kingdom if you start your own kingdom this is what you will immediately have to do if you don't have the right backing if you don't have the right right to rule you have to guard your land because like i can say everyone because everyone has then declared war on you no one will obviously no villages are in any enemy territory that you might use for recruiting none of these will be able to obviously supply you troops so you need to protect what little land you have left what little economy you have left what little trade you technically may have left if you hold a town in your start of your kingdom these are all very critical so it's a case of you need to do as much as you can to fight them on your own ground Staying safe, staying safe, you know, being able to potentially, if there's a too bigger, too bigger war party jumping into a castle, um, whether or not they commit siege to that castle or not, you may or may not be able to wipe out obviously that warring army straight there and then. And like I say, it's a case of eventually, um, with lords getting beaten every time, having to retrain, having to lose money, going retraining and upgrading. Eventually, the lords of other kingdoms will start to grumble to their king. Their king will go, right, this war's gone on long enough. Um, it, this is no, not doing any advantage to either side, so we'll then offer peace. At this point, obviously, you accept that. Then you focus on the other kingdoms. Eventually, one, one after the other will fall into place. Now, at this point, if you're in a really good position, you may, like I say before, you may want to decide you want to flip flip it on its head and then go on the attack because you have the momentum like i say 
they won't have that many troops left to obviously reinforce. They're going to have good garrisons in the castles, but they're not going to have any, any outside interference, or it's very unlikely. Or if they do, these parties are going to be very weak because they've got very inexperienced troops on their side. So, like I say, for the majority of you, this might have been a very obvious uh, answer or video or opinion or, you know, information to yourself. But to be fair, even then, sometimes it is quite hard to realise when you should probably go into a defensive pattern rather than trying to constantly attack a single castle like myself. So, you know, it's sometimes it's about realising what situation you you find yourself in. Um, so, like I say, this might have been very obvious to a lot of people, but some people, well, actually a lot of people have been asking in the comments recently what they should do in a certain situation. And then when I say, well, fight a defensive war, they then ask, what do you mean? And obviously this means patrolling your lands, attacking any and every lord that comes into your territory, protecting the villages, protecting the towns, protecting the castles, protecting the caravans, everything. You know, because this will allow you to upgrade your troops to a very high experience and hopefully it won't allow you to be ambushed either because you're in friendly territory. So it is, you know, the likelihood of being ambushed is a lot less potentially than being in enemy territory. But like I say, it's all very obvious, so I'm just going to shut up, let you enjoy the rest of the video. We do jump into a tournament right towards the end and we gain a victory and money. That will help fund further expansion of my party and upgrading and everything like that. But anyway, I'll shut up now and let you watch the rest of the video in peace.
So if you've made it this far, thank you very much for watching. Sorry about obviously the, the big rant at the start, the opinion. Uh, just trying to give as much information and, and kind of like a rough idea of why uh, I would do this personally, fighting a defensive war. So thank you very much for watching. Make sure to like, comment and subscribe. Put down in the comment section below any questions or any opinions, anything like that. Thank you very much for watching.